why do I play another game? Hive, Cubecraft, Hyperlands, Galaxy. There are so many good servers on Better. So why would I, a YouTuber, choose to not play on a server that is both quality-wise and player-wise better off than NG? I could be growing four times as fast on YouTube if I made Hive content, since there's more players that could watch your videos and there's better game modes to choose from when making videos. From an outside perspective, it really doesn't make sense. Another game also has had a history that, well, it hasn't been too positive. It's been stereotyped as a server with bad staff and horrible decision making, not to mention having bad owners who hate the community apparently. While I think in certain circumstances that that is true i don't approve of that generalization i would appreciate if you give me feedback to what you think about the points i will bring up and whether or not it has changed your view on other games with that being said allow me to explain why i play other games and why you should try it Now I could talk about how and why Nether Games is so good for hours, but my main reason is that I really believe Nether Games can grow to be one of Bedrock's biggest servers. I remember when I started off my channel, I got a collab from my now good friend, Blitted Noobs. He was at maybe 2k subs and I was maybe under 200. He gave me a shot and it paid off. I don't think my channel would be this successful if I wasn't given an opportunity to grow. I think I can help Nether Games get the chance it deserves to really show how good it can be. And I'm not saying I'm the type of guy that gets Nether Games' trust and then makes an exposed video over losing a rank. It might be hard for you to sit here and hear me say give another games the opportunity to grow when you probably think another games is a really bad server. Whenever you play another games all you may see is bugs, the hackers, the constant crashes, the toxic staff. What I see is all the effort put into the server. When I see a bug I feel frustrated for the developers. It's like when I find a bug in my pack it makes no sense why there should be a bug and it takes me hours of troubleshooting to figure out what the heck happened. I understand that nobody can be perfect, and for those that use my packs know it's impossible for me to release a pack without at least three annoying bugs. I feel very frustrated when something goes wrong, and I can't explain why it happens or how to fix it. People only see the problem, they don't see how hard it is to fix that problem. When I see a hacker, I feel the owner's frustration that nobody understands how hard it is to make a really good anti-cheat. I mean, look at Hive. It went from a good anti-cheat to debatable if it even existed. Don't cancel me, this is a joke. I think. When I see crashes or restarts, I am frustrated because sometimes I'm in a game and I'm just suddenly disconnected. But I understand that you only succeed as much as you fail. I mean, look at me. So many of you supported my questionably bad videos before I even knew what I was doing. And it's debatable if I know what I'm doing now, but... Did you guys get mad at me for not having the best microphone, or not the best video quality, or in my case, the most manly voice ever? <laughs> for those that did get mad, I genuinely feel bad for you for having to bully a kid that's just trying to have fun with a hobby and has no money. When I see staff frustrated and being passive aggressive, which is very rare I might add, I don't start making fun of them for not being as nice as they can. I see a person that voluntarily decides to deal with people that unironically ask when the server can stop having bugs. It's like, bro, have you seen how many bugs Evident encounters? on Hive, it's like Hive creates a new bug every month so he can post another trap video. Before you dislike, I like evidence videos, okay, I'm just saying. People only care about themselves, they don't care about the developers that probably feel bad for having disconnected 2k players because of a bug or because of a server crash which was out of their control. Unless you own a business or are a person that likes to create things, you won't understand anything I'm saying. But as somebody that constantly feels pressure from people that might leave a comment for me putting the wrong pack in the description, I can see how somebody can feel in a situation out of their control. I don't understand how anybody can watch this video and still tell me that staff clearly don't care about their server and they don't want to improve it and they don't care about players experience. Bugs do get fixed. Servers restart to add new updates. Nether Games constantly adds new staff to have to deal with people that unironically report losing their bed as a bug. I like a good underdog story. I like supporting the person who has a passion for something. Nether Games isn't making tens of thousands of dollars. It's selling maybe 500 to 900 dollars worth of ranks every month, at least from my calculations, and has to still pay map builders, pay developers, pay servers, and keep some money for future investments. A thousand dollars a month may sound like a lot, but when you run a server with maybe 10,000 unique logins a day and a consistent 2.5k to 3k players that all expect a high quality server with high quality staff then it's not that much keep in mind maybe half of the staff currently doesn't get paid they do it because it's a fun hobby or because they generally want to make your day a better day so before you call your next conversation with staff stupid please keep in mind that these aren't idiots that just like to make money and not care about what they do these are people that have a passion for spending hours upon hours of their time improving a server that you just play on as a hobby yourself enough about the rant let's get into the wholesome stuff
I personally have really enjoyed the Nether Games community. Sure, it's toxic, but what community isn't? I left Cubecraft because I just didn't enjoy the people I was surrounded by. Neither did they enjoy my presence, which is fair since I sound like I'm 13 living in a basement making YouTube videos all day. From what I've heard, Hive seems to have gotten pretty good at having a good community, but nowhere else have I made friends as quickly as on other games. I remember back when I met Cloudy, he got mad at me in a client review video on my channel. I know it's uh, very hypocritical of me to say that Nether Games has a good community when my first conversation with my best friend on it looked like this. But after that day, we really clicked. And to this day, our e-dating is still good. <coughs> I mean, friendship, sorry, my bad. I also have met more wholesome fans on other games than any other server. But Christ, that's because you make content on here. Uh, yeah, but did I ask? Got him. Fans I meet on Hyper Cubecraft, you should just say, oh my gosh, lol, thought you were better. Like, I met this level 40 hype sweat on survival games who knew me from making a pack, and he lost a 2v1, and he got mad and said, bro, I thought you were better. Like, dude. Now, I am biased when it comes to this, since it's hard to have a grasp of how toxic slash wholesome a community is based on some past experiences and some vague descriptions but i will say there really are worse communities another games has been known to act upon really toxic situations in the hopes of ending them one example being the removal of guillotine boards a while ago while it was and still is very controversial it did its job. I think it's obvious that competition can bring competitive players, and if that competition gets too far, it can sometimes end badly. So it's a really hard balance to hold. Personally, I would have tried to talk to the owners of the guilds, maybe, and try to resolve it privately, but the other game seems to be really good at ending conflicts without having to interfere directly, so... I, I guess it worked out. But besides some incidents like that, I think the new player base coming into another games is less toxic than ever. I mean, if you look at players that have been playing for a year or longer, they are way more toxic in comparison. But I mean, even the most toxic players really aren't toxic. Like, they're not swearing. They're not saying, like, the N-word. They're not, they're, not, they're not toxic toxic, you know? They're just toxic for another games' standards. You know, be being really toxic for another games' standards might be, like, normal on, like, a different server. So I don't think, that, I think the most toxic player in other games is, like the most toxic. I know it's been a long time since I've met somebody that's like genuinely been like really toxic and like trashed everybody so I don't think Nether Games is really toxic. But Nether Games still does a really good job of keeping existing toxicity as isolated as possible. Their chat filler is one of the best if you want to compare them to featured servers. Even going as far as to blacklist sucks which which for me is too far since I literally can say the sentences like man that sucks or dude it sucks that I can't play. Another really annoying blacklisted word is kill or more specifically killed kill i can understand but killed i mean like I, I can't say i killed pink or i can't say killed both at our base some of that are vital for communication especially if you're not in a call so it does suck that you have to bypass a filter or use a really annoying replacement bird like a uh, got for killed i know it's bad but like what else do i use like both blues who were at our base decided it was in their best interest to sacrifice to me yeah that's what i thought that's that like what else do you use but i guess i'd rather have a really thorough word filter than a really bad one but I do still think it could be less strict, especially for important keywords that are necessary for clear communication. Overall, I think Nether Games has a really good community. I see a lot of people asking if anybody wants to play Bedwars with them, which is incredibly wholesome and sad at the same time. There also aren't that many idiots on other games as there are on other servers, which makes interacting with large groups of players like guilds way easier, since their one toxic player isn't destroying their reputation. Again, I don't think Nether Games has a perfect community, but I think, if anything, it's above average. There's not a lot of scrims on other games, unlike servers such as Hive or Cubecraft. Neither a popular ranked server like there is for Hypixel. It's not because players are bad, it's actually because players are good. Let me explain. Both Hive and Cubecraft struggle from the problem that they are getting more new players and they're keeping old ones, which means a lot of old players will have an easier time winning because more and more beginners are in lobbies. A hyperinflation of such beginners leads to there being more scrims where really good players play against more really good players to still have some enjoyment. While other games is slowly getting there, which you can notice by the increasing interest in tournaments, it's not gotten far enough for you to never meet a sweat in a game. For me personally, I still lose my bet every 3 to 10 games, which is horrible, but shows that people aren't incompetent. As a matter of fact, recently lobbies have gotten significantly faster because everybody's trying to get credits. If you didn't know, credits are a way to get ranks, and currently the fastest method to get credits is by getting bets in finals. So, so what do you want to do if you want to get a lot of credits? Play faster. Now, it's slowed down noticeably, but it shows that there are a lot of players who can play fast and play well. 
I personally haven't been able to get a solo win streak over 10 at 50 yet, mainly because of hackers, but also because I'm bad and I get targeted and I get capistic and fireballs and sorry I get a bit carried away, but you get the point. Bedwars is still sweaty enough for the average sweat. And I like normal Bedwars more than any other tourney or ranked version of Bedwars. There's just something about the decision making and the strategies involved that fascinates me and gives me enjoyment. I personally hope Nether Games does one day become a featured server. As unlikely as it is, I think the staff team deserves it for all the effort they put into the server. If you still think Nether Games is a bad server and you could run it better, I want to pass this idea by you. What if you're 14 and you and some friends start selling lemonade? Oh wait, my bad, you guys probably don't know what a lemon is. Imagine you're 14 and you and some friends create some music. That should be more relatable for you kids. You post it on Spotify and it starts to really pick up. Suddenly a lot of people know who you are and start telling their friends about you who are setting expectations. Expectations such as a professional microphone even though you just used your phone mic expectations such as a clean vocal performance even though you're just 14 and you're probably squeakier than my wooden floor People focus more on their expectations rather than their reality when word spreads about something. Everybody has played Hyper Cubecraft, which sets standards on what every server should look like. Nether Games doesn't have the best anti-cheat. Nether Games can't add new updates to game modes every other month. Nobody's quitting college because of a server the size of Nether Games. Yet it's still the favorite server of thousands of players. If somebody can build something so big and successful just from passion, that person has earned my respect. And I hope it has earned yours. Nether Games isn't perfect and it won't ever be, but that doesn't mean we should dismiss it as another bad server with bad staff who wants to do the responsible thing and not spend all of their life savings making sure your average ping is lowered by 50. Boom, bass drop, oh yeah, got